What's up everybody, this is Danny, and this is the Apple 6th generation iPod Touch. And the iPod Touch has not been updated in three years, so it finally gets a much deserved upgrade. Apple has finally upgraded the internals, gave it some fresh new colors, including gold, and you have an option for a 128 gigabyte version. So there are some significant changes here. So let's go ahead and open up the box and see what comes with it. I have the blue one, which is my favorite color here. And let's see what comes inside of the box and see if anything's changed. You get your typical Apple documentation and you get the lightning cord and you also get the ear pod. So nothing new here. And of course, let's not forget about the Apple stickers. Just looking at the sixth generation, it's really hard to tell the difference if this is the new one or not because the design is pretty much exactly the same. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's different about the sixth generation. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that there is no more loop connector. So you won't find this loop anywhere within the size ranges of the new iPod. And if you're looking at the camera, it looks the same, but it actually gets a very nice significant bump up to a higher eight megapixel camera with F2.4 aperture versus the last generation's five megapixels. The front facing camera gets a slight bump to the 1.2 megapixels. And the one thing that's a little disappointing is that the home button stays the same. So no touch ID on this new iPod. The most significant change here is to the internals of the iPod. For now, it gets the A8 processor with one gigabyte of RAM and the M8 motion co-processor. And this is the exact same chipset you're gonna find in the iPhone 6, just slightly underclocked. And you can see here by performance, this thing just absolutely spanks the fifth generation iPod. The screen remains at four inches with the same retina display resolution. I was a little bit disappointed by this. I really wish they would have bumped it up to the 4.7 inch display of the iPhone 6. This is what I wanted, but you never know what Apple's gonna release in the future. Even though that the display is unchanged, at least it's still a great display. It's a four inch IPS display. 326 pixels per inch and it's got nice color vibrancy it's nice and bright and it's got decent viewing angles as well i don't know maybe some of you out there like the smaller and more compact form factor and if you do then you're going to feel right at home here but for me i'm used to using much larger displays so the multimedia experience for my personal taste was not as good on this ipod just a little bit too crammed for me and that single speaker at the bottom is definitely not as loud as the iphone 6. Even though a larger screen would have been nicer all across the board, I think that most people are going to be looking into this for gaming. So how does it game? It does absolutely fantastic with the A8 processor and the one gigabyte of RAM and the bumped up GPU. It handles every game that I could throw at it. The graphically intensive games run buttery smooth on this like Mortal Kombat X. And the only one thing that I've noticed is that it does heat up pretty significantly on the back when you're playing these games. But any kind of games that support metal, look at the frames per second on this. Man, the frame rates are silky smooth on here. So if you're gonna buy this for gaming, then you're gonna have absolutely no problem whatsoever gaming on the brand new iPod Touch. I've had no problems with performance on a day-to-day -day basis. It's very snappy, it's super quick. I say it's right on par with the iPhone 6. I'd say this is one of the biggest reasons why you would wanna buy this iPod, because if you've used the fifth generation iPod, then you know that it does stutter from time to time and it definitely doesn't game as well as it should. So I think overall you're gonna be happy with the web browsing, any kind of thing that you can throw at it. And I did forget to mention that it does have an upgrade to Bluetooth 4.1 and 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Well, I guess this thing is an iPod, so it does come preloaded with iOS 8.4 and Apple Music, and it comes with an option to get 128 gigabytes of storage. That's the largest option that's available, but I think at the $399 price point, that's pretty expensive. So we'll finish this thing up by talking about the new eight megapixel camera. So how good is this camera? I'd say it's on par with the iPhone 5 or 5S. It's able to take some very nice shots. And I was able to play around with this for a couple of days, took a bunch of shots, and it does tend to overexpose a bit, but that's just the camera trait and you can dial down the exposure in the software, but the software is very familiar. It's exactly the same experience you're gonna get across all iOS devices. And I'm pretty happy with the picture so far. 
far. It does gain 120 frames per second slow-mo. You don't get the 240 like you do on the iPhone 6, but it definitely does the job. And when it comes to video, it's actually pretty crisp. I like the way that the video is coming out. I think the dynamic range is pretty decent for this iPod. So I don't think you'll be disappointed in the camera quality. So I think if you are familiar with the iPhone 5 or 5S quality, then this is exactly what you're getting in this new iPod. The question is, should you buy this iPod? And I say, if you already have an iPhone, then you probably should not. But if you can't have a phone right now, like if you're too young and need some type of multimedia device, then I say this is probably what you wanna get. Or if you already own an Android device and want an iOS device to play with, but don't want an iPad and want something more compact and powerful, then this is definitely something to consider. If you are going to buy one, they start at $199 for the 16 gigabyte model, but I think that the 32 gigabyte is the sweet spot at 250. But anything above that, you're really jumping into iPhone territory, so I would definitely reconsider. All right, guys, well, that does it for me with this iPod Touch 6th generation review. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Follow me on Twitter at SuperScientific, and I will see you guys in the next video.